Good after evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wit Finish Wednesday. We got Katie over here, man and the woman and woman and the computer. And uh, I'm John DeMuth. I'm over here tying some flies and uh, looking forward to hanging out with everyone. So what's up, Steve? I think I saw Josh Riston say hello earlier and Bill. What's happening, my man and Patrick Smith with the last minute egg fly um, post of the evening. What's up, Mike? Ken B, good day, away over in Australia. What's up, Jared, with Boys in the Outdoors? And Freddie, we haven't seen you in a long time. Jimmy and everyone else saying hello. Howdy. It's awesome to be back once again. We've got a fun night to uh, to tie flies, tell jokes, and uh, laugh a little bit. And we're going to be giving away a few things, right, Katie? Yep. So um, tonight we're going to give three of these packages. These are the, uh, I believe all we have right now are the 8 millimeter egg static um, packages that have the the legs, the egg static material, some beads, and a lot of, a lot of good, uh, good stuff. We get creative with that. Um, we're going to do some name drawing or some uh, number drawing like the last week. There's Misha saying hello to the deer in the front yard. Um, what's up, Barry? From Balmy, Alberta. And uh, Nan, awesome to see you too. Um, so we're going to give three of these packs away. We're going to tie some of Lance Egan. He's a uh, Umqua Feather Merchant Man. Uh, works over at Fly Fish Food, which is similar to this kind of why I put this shirt on. Um, <clears throat> James, uh, we've got, I don't know if yours is the same shirt, but um, I figure since it's Fly Fish Food at Jimmy's or Jimmy's Fly Fish Food, uh, I should wear this shirt tonight. Um, but we're going to tie Lance Egan's purple dart. Um, I tied his, his red dart, gosh, when it when I first saw it, I don't know, six, seven years ago mm -hmm. and uh, caught fish on the South Holston quite, quite a bit um, with it. I remember one time I caught a fish and I wasn't even holding the rod. It was just the, the nymph was just sitting there in the water and, and caught one on that, that fly. Um, spaghetti and eggs, best twin nymphs. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but we're going to tie the purple dart tonight because as Chris, who I don't think is on here tonight, says purple don't work. So um, we'll, we'll go with the purple one. Um, with that said, we've got one loaded in the vise, and hopefully she, Katie can uh, switch us over here. This is uh, one of the ones we posted today. This is a size 14 with a 3.5 millimeter bead, and we'll go over some different techniques <clears throat> and, um, and methods for tying this fly. This is just kind of the standard, standard version. Um, so I don't want to say nothing fancy, but it is uh, it is not a difficult fly to tie if you've got a few of the techniques down. Um, but otherwise, um, I guess tying your shoes is difficult if you don't know how to do it. So, Katie, do you want to um, show some pictures now, or do you want to wait and and maybe tie a fly and then show some pictures? Well, we can show some pictures now. That sounds good. Okay. Oh, and Misha wants to say something. Come here. Can you get up here? No, no, maybe. Well, Misha, Misha right here. She says hello. She wants to know what's going on. You little doggy. I know. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's see some pictures. Okay. So the first picture that we have, we got from Big T at Big T Fly Fishing. Really cool pick of a bunch of little eggs. So we tied our um, egg-tastic, Simperfly egg-tastic material eggs last week. And so all the pictures that I'm getting ready to show you are pictures that you guys sent in um, of your versions of your eggs. And um, hopefully we'll be giving away some more egg-static material tonight. So if you don't have the egg-static material to make eggs, maybe you'll get some here in a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. But that's Big T's. And Chattanooga River Fly Shop also did a neat collage here with some of their inventory there at the shop. It's actually Chattooga. Chattooga. Okay. But as you can see, they've got um, the egg static and eight millimeter pictured here in 
a few of the colors available and some already tied eggs ready to go. They also, I think they also have some of the Chanel. Yep, the Flex Chanel in the picture. So um, we have another photo from Jared Blazer. Jared's on here tonight. Yellow. Blazing in the outdoors. Um, Ken B from Australia sent us his weekly picture of his eggs. And I really like the, um, what do you call the, the veil. the veil? Yes. That looks really cool. Very creative there. Nan emailed us a couple of her photos with her beautiful graphics attached. Oh, cool. Here's her golden job, egg and her pinks. And it looks like they've got a little bit of something on the um, thread on the under underneath there. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Kind of shiny. You can't tell what material that is. Patrick W. Smith also sent in a pretty pink with a pink um, bead with a little bit of the uh, um, the texture on the bead there. I can't remember what those beads are called, but they have a texture on them. Josh Riston's entry here, another yellow with an orange bead. Now Josh Riston is had me confused because he is, I believe, I remember right, he's Bob Dole. Bob Dole, okay. And I'm like, oh, Bob Dole's sending us some stuff. That's and awesome. And he said his eight-year-old daughter tied this one. Really? Well, mm -hmm. that's really good. You can clear that up. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but those are the ones that we got this week. Um, so I guess we can get started with the purple dart, Lance Egan's pattern, um, which when I was editing a video Sunday, John went out for some fishing and was able to catch a little fish using what we're going to tie tonight, purple dart. Just a little guy. This is, uh, this is the reason that we're, uh, we're tying this one tonight because I had, uh, Really didn't fish too awful long. This was over on the Madison River, and um, I tied uh, tied a few things on, and weren't, wasn't getting much uh, um, much luck. And uh, then I turned, put this one on, so my point fly, and caught that big one. And I caught about six or seven others, and then I went to go get Katie. So that is why we're tying this fly. So let's get started here. Put this one back down here. So the, the two hooks I'm going to use for this are going to be, they're both going to be the Umqua XC400BL. We're going to use the size 14 and the size 16. And beads, I'm, I'm going to start off with a 3.5 millimeter gold tungsten slotted bead. But um, <clears throat> for the 14, I'd probably use, maybe go down to 3, but I would definitely 3.5 or... Uh, even up to four millimeter would be good. And um, on the 16, three millimeters is typically what I stick with, but you can go smaller or get a little bigger. Don't uh, <clears throat> overthink it. I think it's nice to have some on these, on the bigger ones, the size 14, to have some larger bead sizes. So in case you need something that'll really sink down quick. Um, but that's Leroy, that is correct. <clears throat> so I'm going to set this down. So the thread I'm going to be using is the 12 lot Classic Wax Thread in red. And we should have a video coming out soon with a solution for storing thread and that, spools. And that reminds me, we uh, posted a video yesterday tying these eggs. And I hope you guys have had a chance to check it out. If you haven't, then uh, then you should. Video. Yeah. Uh, so the tail is going to be this uh, Mets soft hackle purple. Um, I remember when I tied these initially uh, the the red dart and all of them. Um, I called I, I called Flyfish Food and talked to Lance and I'm like, which what what is the product for the tail? And this is I think this came directly from Flyfish Food, um, but so you've got the Met Soft Hackle Purple. But I pulled this out because this is some dyed Hungarian partridge. And um, this is what I've mm -hmm. used on everything is this Met stuff. But just for the fun of it, we'll switch this out. Yes, Freddie, that is correct. We're being real. Uh, um, we're not really switching anything up. It's just the same thing we've always done. 
That's right. Okay. So to prep this, let's switch back over to the side. So I'm just going to make sure my tips are lined up here. See how the tips are lined up? I'm going to grab this by the tip, pull it away. I'm a bunch of lined up. I'm just kind of pinch it all together. And I've got maybe a couple long ones here. Pull those out. So the main reason I'm using this is to show if you don't have the, the quote correct material, which is this is what the recipe will call for. Just grab whatever, whatever you got. Um, <clears throat> that's preferably purple. And if you don't have purple, don't worry about it. Grab something else because you will eventually have purple, I promise. All right, so we've got our little little tail here. Now, this is not going to be a super long tail. You don't want it as long as the hook shank. Um, but I, I guess I might be close as long as the hook shank. Close. Um, <clears throat> but it's relatively short. But because it is so short, um, you want to put probably more in there than you than you would think. So that's well, a bunch. I think when Lance does it on, on the thing, Thanks for my daughter's flight on the show. The credit should be how much more. Yes, your daughter, she gets all the credit for that one. Um, all the credit. So, um, so you can see that tail's just kind of a short, stubby tail, uh, about the the length, somewhere between the hook gap and the hook shank. But um, since we uh, shortened it up so much, it gets pretty thin at the tips. So that's kind of why you want a little bit more than normal. So I'm going to bring my thread up. What's up, lid rig? Keeping my material on top of the hook shank. And the way I'm doing this, <clears throat> I'm going to try to show you as we're tying, as I'm tying this over. So if I keep the, the firm pressure all the way around, I'm going to push this material. See, I'm pushing the material over like that. And that's not what we want. So this is all about thread control here. Just kind of lightly bring it over. And then I'm going to pull it forward. Lightly bring it over. Let's get that one where I want it. Pull it forward. So as I, as I kind of bring it straight like that and then pull it forward, that keeps my material. This wrap here is I'm bringing it up, pushes the material forward, like a, a, keeps it on top of the hook shank. As I bring it down and pull the thread forward, it just kind of locks everything in. I don't know if that made any sense, but that's um, one of the tricks for keeping the... Um, Keep your material on top of the hook shank. Make sure my bead's going the right way. It wasn't. Now we'll get that back up to the front. <clears throat> All right. So trick number two. We're going to use some, uh, oh gosh. Someone can tell me what this is. The sulky tinsel, an, eight, an 8040. Um, the stuff right here, this is what, what Lance uses on his. I'll probably have to reach over and grab it again, but I've got the piece here that I've been using. And the way I've kept up with this, and this is kind of kind of important, as you notice, I've got these two little vice pawns on my desk here. Um, let me switch back over to the side. Um, two little vice pawns here that um, that you haven't seen recently, and that's because I've been using them to hold my material down and. Now I can't see my, here's my tippet. So 7X tippet and um, the uh, that little tinsel goes missing all the time. So uh, what's up, Joe? Uh, so using this this little magnet here, and, and the vice ponds are cool. I definitely mean they look, look neat, but just using the magnet to hold this down. What I did before I started using the vice ponds is I would use hackle pliers. And I ended up having a, a set of hackle pliers to hold the tinsel, hackle pliers to hold the tippet, and hackle pliers to hold my feather. And then I had hackle pliers laying everywhere. So if you'll just get a magnet or something like this and hold your material down like that, it'll keep it from blowing away and getting lost. So to next tip, solved. Joe, you're going to be in Tennessee this week, aren't you? All right, so let's... Um, I'm going to tie this, the tinsel in on my side. So one, two, just kind of open wraps. So you can see that's tied straight in on my side. And then I'm going to get the tippet, pull it off my, from under the magnet. And I'm going to 
wrap it on your side. Try to make it so you can see it. Just like that. Okay. Now take all my, my materials, stick it back in my clip. Uh, Ken, you can use um, you can use your thread if you want. If you've got, I would make sure the thread matches the color of your body. So I wouldn't use this red thread. Um, but uh, but if you're tying the purple dart, you have purple thread. I will just double up a piece of the thread and bring it back. So you twist it up and use use your thread. to be another another um, alternative. Okay, so the next uh, next material is a UV purple right there, where my finger is. UV purple eye stub. So we'll pull this out. And this is one of those things that, especially when you get tying them small, can be kind of a... Well, Joe, I understand. Steve said, family first, I understand. Totally. We're, we're, that's why we're not going to be there this weekend. Um, so we have a little, little piece of hook with this nice little lid rig magnet here. Y'all can see a little better. Remember, just a little bit here. I'm going to pull it out and, and really just pull out even a smaller amount. And I take that pinch and I just see how it's just sitting right there on my thread. Didn't put my finger, the thread's holding on my finger now. And I just give it a quick little twist. What I want to do is kind of keep it work my way down, kind of keep it loose on there until I'm, until I'm getting a lot of that dubbing on there and then I can tighten it all up as one solid noodle. So you see it's a little bit bigger there, so we'll stretch that out. Maybe stretch out a touch more. I might need to put a little bit more on there, but for now, we'll call that, call that good. Okay, so now we're going to bring our thread back and have that dubbing start right at the tail. And we want to keep this pretty thin. But don't, um, it's one of the things that Lance talks about, like don't, when we put these two ribbing materials in, we're going to, uh, that'll kind of help flatten the body out and everything. So don't worry about if there's any big, big lumps or anything in there, but we want to, have that go all the way up to the front. So see how that's pretty thin? It's exactly what we're looking for. Just here for the magnets, that's right. Now this one works nice, as you can see. Switch back over to the side, please, ma'am. As you can see, this uh, is kind of like a, where I'm putting my flies after they're done. So they're, I mean, I'm sure I can knock them off if I want to, but it keeps them, uh, keeps them in place. So it kind of makes me feel like feel special once I get done to set them there and get them all nice and organized, pretty, and yeah. And then Katie comes in, it's like, is that all you've done? I'm like, yep, that's all I've done. So anyway, okay. So the next thing we we'll tie is a hackle, is our, our hackle. And I've got two uh, options here. One is the 4B. This is the uh, Orby hen cape in green well that works. As you um, can see, it's clear. Yeah. It's invisible. Yeah. If you, you get this one right here, this one you got. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Why don't you put it down on the so they can, there, there go. you go. So here is the 4B hen cape in green well. And I then, think that's what's making me sneeze. You think? I think so. Well, maybe. I'll put it in here. No, it's it's definitely that soft tackle stuff. You think so? Yeah. Well, I'll just zip it up then because we're going to use something else. So what we're, we're going to use as well, because this is what we posted today was that um, the 4B. I'm going to use this, the Hebert Miner. This is another hint, just another hint, just a different um, genetic line of, um, of chickens. So... The main reason I like this better is the feathers are a little bit longer, so I can get um, I can get more flies out of one feather. Especially once I start tying sixteens on this particular cape, I have to get really high up on the neck here to get the feathers out, so I can get usually one fly out of a feather. Um, whereas on the the Hebert Miner, I can get more than one fly out of feathers. So that's nice. 
So let's just size one up here just to see what we're looking like. So I just pull, grab a feather and without pulling it off, I'll just stick it on there and just to see what we're looking like. And that's maybe a shade on the big side, but that should be okay. Find one just, yeah. I want to get one just a little bit smaller. Let's see how that one's going to look. Yeah, it'll be okay. All right, so we've got our got our feather here. All I'm going to do is hold it by the tip, pull it back, construct everything back. So I get get it looking like this right here. Badger furnace. Yeah. Where do you get that the magnet? I have flat ones that are awkward. These are loan vice ponds, man. And I think they're like, I don't know how much they are, like five, six by. They're not, they're very inexpensive. But then again, they're just a magnet. It's a loan vice pond. Um, <clears throat> so let's switch over to the fly. So I've got my feather here all prepared. And I'm just, all I did is I grabbed it by the tip. They pulled it back like that. And I'm just going to put a wrap in. Another wrap, pull tight, pull everything back, two more wraps. And then I can trim that little tip out like that. And while the, the stem's long, I can I don't need hack of pliers or anything. I can just wrap it in. And this is the one thing that Lance is big on. Just one wrap is all you need. But you need to look on the top and see where your hackle started, because if I if your hackle doesn't start until like the side here and you cut it off, you can have the bottom with no hackle, which is honestly fine because that's going to help the fly ride the way it's supposed to anyway. But we want the hackle to go all around if possible. So I'm going to bring it down, do one wrap, two wraps, and now I'm going to pull everything back. Put a couple more wraps in. And then we'll trim that out just like that. Oh, okay, I'll say it again. Just like that. So there we go. Nice. So we got a little little hackle in there. Do I? Is it nice? Oh, thank you. So when I'm done with the hackle, I like to grab it with my hackle pliers because I can get two, probably two more flies out of this one hackle and uh, grab the hack wires and just set it there. So this just, these three little things are going to keep it to where I don't lose this feather so I can get a free another fly out of that feather. I'm not going to lose my um, uh, material or anything else. And you know what, guys? You get to watch, watch me do that again. You guys have been so entertaining. It just wouldn't be the same unless I did stuff more than once. Right? Mm -hmm. One and a half. What's one and a half, Steve? Okay, so now I'm going to take my bob and cradle and uh, just put my put my thread in the bottom cradle, bob and cradle. I forgot. I was talking about not losing your materials, and I lost it. I lost all my materials, my tippet and my tinsel. And you know what? It's because I hadn't tied them in yet. So there's our tinsel tied in. And all I'm going to do is just go over it once, put a couple on the other side, trim it out, take it like this, put it once again under my magnet. And now we're going to go the opposite direction and use this tippet. And if you're um, like uh, like Ken from Australia asked, if you want to you use thread here, you can use a lot of different things, but just, uh, I would say if you didn't have tippet that was 5X or smaller, I would just use thread that matched the, um, the color of the body. And now we've got our tippet tied in. And now we're going to do the same thing we did a second ago, but the only thing is our hackle has already been started. So how do we get by with that? Just grab it with some tweezers, 
pull it back. So see, I've got like a little starting of a triangle. Cut that off, that off. So you see how I've got that triangle right there. Now I'm gonna put that right in there. Put a few wraps in there just to get it good and locked in. Now we use our hackle pliers because it's getting a little bit short. Pull this back. One wrap. That's all we're going to need. Now, do you save that hackle in your hackle pliers? Yes, of course. I can get I can get one more out of this. Pull all of it back, just like we did a second ago. Put about three wraps in. Now we'll cut the stem out. Like that. Hey, I like that one better anyway. It's got more flash in it. So let's get that down. And I'm not too worried about the, the hackle being <clears throat> sticking forward too much or anything. Um, so the last thing we'll use is the UV pink here. So UV pink. All right. Well, have fun or try not to try to have fun at work, Ken. Once again, I've told you this a few times, Kate and I just love seeing you hopping on before right before work there in Australia. And he's so prompt too about his break. It's like always on time and comes in, has his like, you know, break for a little bit, watches the show, and then he's like back to work. Yeah, unfortunately we we, we were too late today, but we could be better on uh, being on time for just for Ken's sake. We could. Okay, so you just missed me tying in the pink collar. Um, switch it back over to the vise, and Katie will show you what it looks like. So I just wrapped that in. Let me undo that so you can see. So this is just a little, a little bit, very fine. With that pink eye stub. See, there's one full wrap. There's two full wraps there. I don't have a full one left on bare thread now. So the, the thing is, like, once I start building my little red collar up here, see how it starts pushing that, um, the ice stub down a little bit. So it kind of made it a little bit smaller. So you want a little bit of a, uh, I won't say a lot, because it's not, not really correct at all, but you want maybe a touch more than you would think for that call, for that, um, for that pink, that fluorescent pink. So let's throw a little, I know if I keep reusing these feathers, getting more than one fly out of them, they will go broke, Steve. Absolutely will. So one thing that you need to find, trusty whip finisher. And you'll put just enough, that you can see that little bit of a red band there. See how you can see that right there? For me, that's probably good, but let's say you wanted a little bit more. I just like the smell of Sally Hansen, so we'll just put a little drop more of that on there. Bring it around. I'm still not used to seeing you use the green loon one because oh, you that. use the yellow for so long. Well, I think I've been using this green one. I know, but still, yeah. I'm excited when I found this one at Orvis. It's their Orvis edition. So here's the... Um, the Hungarian partridge tail probably won't work now. Um, but that's kind of how the hackle should look pink, our ribbing, and everything. So we'll do a quick switcheroo here and we'll tie the same size with a bigger bead because with a bigger bead, it does kind of switch it around a little bit. And while we're doing, while I'm getting this loaded up, do you want to write a number on a piece of paper or would you like for me to? Yeah. So I was thinking that um, if anyone watching tonight is interested in doing guess the number game with me, um, we have how many kits do we have to give away? We have three more ecstatic kits that we want to give away. So if you would like to throw out a number, um, don't do it yet. Um to try to win one of these kits, we'll send it out to you. And if you weren't watching last week, um, 
They, these are them right here. They have a bunch of cool stuff they're, inside. They're, they're Honey, they're watching me. Let's switch over. They, they're watching me try to put okay. a bead on the hook. So, so here's the kit. And yeah. that's the front of it. And then the back of it has cool stuff on the inside. And we sent one to Kenby in Australia last week, right? We sent the Smitty's fly box to Kenby. Okay. And we sent one to Mike. Mike. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So let me write a number down and I'll hand you a piece of paper. And then they can start like putting them. They can, like, if you want to win one, just put your number in. And then yep, the number. three closest ones to the number that I have will be the winner. So it's, it's going to be, let's see. Um, Pick one through 50. One through I'm gonna do one through 100. One through 100. Okay. Here you go. Here's one, my number. One second. One second. Are they still watching me put a thing bead on the hook? I've never had this. Well, hopefully, that will be okay. I am. Yes, yeah, be right. All right. So, so I'm handing the number to John. Okay. So and now you I'm guys to try to guess between one and 100. And who okay. the three closest ones? If you want to try to win one of these ecstatic packs, so here is the number. Give me a number. We'll put it right there. That's where it will stay until the numbers are guessed. So that little piece of green paper. Yeah, Steve. I don't know if it's like three thousand dollar retail. Maybe no, kid, they... you're gonna have to keep track of the numbers. I am. They got a bunch of them. I know. I can like screenshot. <laughs> I can scroll up. Okay. So you only. Cool. All right, so back to tying because I'm going to give everybody plenty of time to guess a number between one and a hundred. The three closest ones to the ones on the post-it note that I gave John a few minutes ago um, will send you one of these ecstatic packs. Yes. So the issue I'm running into right now, I didn't run into the first, the first two, but my bead is covering up my eye. So I'm trying to find a bead that doesn't have a bigger hole on it. Unfortunately, my hole's too big. So I might have to forego that that idea. Let me try the, this one. That's my plan anyway. So I went to a bigger bead, same hook, but bigger bead. And typically the beads, as you go bigger, well, that, that one might work okay. As you go bigger, the slots and the holes and everything get bigger as well. Let's see if I can do this. If that'll help. I just build up a little bit of thread there. If that'll help. Okay. All righty. Oh, Priscilla Ward, Truman, what's your number? Steve? Steve and David? Oh, man, this is so great seeing everyone guess their numbers. Okay, so we, we fixed our issue here somewhat, but not not perfect. We'll get the, the idea down. So the uh, trick number one is make sure your bead doesn't fall off the end of your hook because that would not be good. We're going to use the regular... Um, <clears throat> the regular material, which is this Mets um, soft tackle in purple. Uh, like I said, if you don't have purple, and, and the reason I'm telling you all exactly how to number, or how to number, how to, uh, to, to tie this is number one, we'd love to see your all's flies. So um, you can email us your flies at demuthflyfishing at gmail.com, and we'll share them uh, next week. You can post them on Instagram and tag us on Instagram. You can tag us in the, the photograph and uh, we'll be able to share them next week. And a lot of times for our little giveaways and stuff, we choose from people that are, um, that uh, post the fly. So we've got a kind of a big giveaway coming up next week as well. So I'm going to give it about 30 more seconds and then I will tell you who the three winners are. They got closest to the number that we picked. Ooh, already. So I did about, it's going to be hard for you to guess on that, but that's about 
two thirds of an inch right there from here to where I cut off. Hold it on the top of the hook shank. That's way too long. So I'll undo it. It's still too long, but we'll shorten it up a little bit, an easier way. Just grab like this and pull it. So that's a lot, lot spindly, spindlier. And I don't like that. So we'll undo it, try again. I just get some more. So I want to hold it up, get my tips all lined up. We don't want them. Okay. So yes. So, so drum roll, please. I'm going to wait till John's done tying this in and then he can reveal the number because not only do we have three winners, we have one winner who guessed the number exactly. That was the same as yet. Last time, Mike was the first one to guess. I know. And, and I was, was so like, sure that I picked such a random number. And I'm pretty sure my math is correct on this. Um, so, but if I made a mistake, I apologize and we can fix that. But I'm pretty sure my math is right on this. So. Okay, well... I definitely know my math over. is right on the one who guessed it exactly right. So, do I? You've got another another guess right now, by the way, honey. You, uh, I got Jennifer Blazer, yes. Jennifer, okay. I just looked down and saw that. Okay, so do you want to switch it over to the main? Or no, we'll just do it right here. So, I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna like make you big, and then I'm gonna go little. So that's John, and then here is my number I wrote down. Maybe there we go. So congratulations, Jennifer Blazer guessed it at the very last minute. She got that's exactly like, right. Did you do that one? Yes. So Jennifer Blazer, congratulations! You so are the winner of one of the. Over to you or to something besides just the vice. Just um, sorry, it's hard for me to like do this and that and everything else. Why, so if you would like to come help. over here and do this, you can. Um, and then our next winner, I guess, would be John Boy and Jesse Huddleston. Jesse Huddleston won? He guessed 13. Oh, my goodness. John Boy guessed 21. And then the next closest one, I think, was Nan and then Mike Phillips. So if I got that wrong, you guys let me know. But I'm pretty sure that that was Mike Phillips was ten away. Nan was nine away. Well, that is that is her and Jared, aka Blaze in the Outdoors, wedding anniversary. Yay! So John Boy, congratulations! You've won, and um, Jesse Huddleston is also a winner as well as Jennifer Blazer. So yay, guys! Good job. So be sure that you message us on Instagram with your address that we can send it to you, or you send us an email with your contact info to demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. If you'll throw our email on the chat so they'll be able to see it. That Jesse guy, he's, he, he needs all the help he can get, apparently. Oh, uh, I don't think so. I saw he's been catching uh, catching some good fish on dries in the park right now. It made me wish I was going down there this weekend with you, honey. Um, okay, John Boy. So there's the email. I'm also going to pin our email to the top of the um, chat. And yeah, just email us uh, a good address for us to send you your prize. Congratulations to three of y'all getting this little. I tell you what, Nan, you're about to win. And Jennifer jumped in right at the last second. Oh. There. Well, th th these flies got to be the ones Jennifer ties, not Jared. <laughs> no, that wasn't a deal. She can give them as a gift to her. What's up, Eli? It's good to see Hi, you, Mr. Gonzalez. We just had a big giveaway. I bet Eli's been playing with the new Eggtastic material. We just gave three of these packs away. And um, some lucky winners. It's going to be a busy mail day tomorrow. Um... So we've got some cool stuff from Umqua Feather Merchants to give away either next week or week uh, week after. And this is going to be mainly targeted at new tires because these are two of their um, their tying kits that has like basically everything you need to tie except for a vise and materials. Um, yeah, Steve's right. Um, okay, so I've got my 
tinsel back up, and I'm going to throw that in there as soon as Katie is busy typing. Someone drink. Have a, have a drink. Eli might be busy, but he's been busy tying because I've been seeing some of his stuff. He has been wearing it out. So, yeah, Nan, I saw that same thing, um, the same post that he did on all those uh, tying up the legs on the pheasant tail. Crazy. All right. So I'm going to hold this at an angle here. I'm tying this one on my side of the hook shank. Bring it down. And now I'm going to turn my vise over. I'm picking up my pawn. You can see with, you can't see it right now, but if I pull on the uh, the tip, it, like, I can pull it pretty hard. It's not going to come out on that magnet. Um, although it is kind of hard to grab a hold of. So the tip it, I'm going to put it, hold it at an angle again. I'm going to lock it in, make sure my link's right. And then we'll try to wrap it so it doesn't spin all the way around the hook shank. Yeah, let's get that. So now we've got everything tied in. Now I'm just back to the old, the old doobie. I bet Jesse would say this would work fine in the Great Smoky Mountains. Those of you who don't know, Jesse is a guide in the Great Smoky Mountains. He works with Smoky Mountain Angler. And um, he's a Phenomenal dude. Have a good dinner, Bill. See you, Bill. Um, so once again, we're just tying this on super thin. Not like razor thin, but pretty thin. You can always add more. Oh, Jesse. He's like, I've never won anything in my life. Oh, gosh. Tonight's your night, Jesse. This is the this fly, Jesse, is the one. Oh, you just got back from Wyoming a little while ago, and uh, in Utah, in that same area. This is the one that I caught my biggest Montana fish on. And um, I was just saying, I bet this would work fine in the park. I don't fish as much in the park. I fish it more in the tailwaters up here, and it works just fine there. But um, after I caught that. That one, I knew this was going to be on the the quick route. This one's going to be a little bit thicker than my last one, but it's got an extra weight, so it'll be be okay. So once again, we've used our bottom cradle, bring it around, get my tinsel wrapped in there. Remember the um, when you go with a bigger bead like this, the um, the bead takes up a little bit of that hook shank. So you got to kind of watch where you throw your scissors on the ground. There we go. You be careful over there. There we go. Put this back down to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing, but wrapping in the other direction. Just bring this around. that in. And now we'll pull our feather back out after I stick on. I'm telling you that this little tinsel and tippet goes missing all the time. So it's really cool to not have to worry about that. So I'm going to grab my feather with my tweezers like that. Pull this down. Well, maybe if I can do it without my finger being in the way. Make just a little V here. It's not the easiest in the world trying to do it so you can see it. So we got that little V. Get rid of that. Oh, Jesse has a good dart memory. Let the lake run brown on a red dart pink V. Oh. oh, only on the sh on this show could you be like, what's your f favorite red dart memory? Mm-hmm. All right, so just one one wrap. That's all we're gonna do. I like putting two wraps in, pulling it tight, 
pull this off. Let's jerk everything back before I cut off that hackle. And now we can cut off the hackle. And I could probably get, yep, are you, are you I can say that one? Get one more. So I'm going to put in the hackle plier so we can save it. If you don't save it, you don't know. And I'm going to pull out that UV pink. And just like when you're pulling this out, out of the package or whatever you got it held in, pull out the, the least amount your fingers can pull out because you really just need about a dozen fibers total to make it. All right. You switch it back to the... Hook, please. Yes, standard man 75. Sorry. <laughs> he was one away. Yeah, the contest is over. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. All right, so we've got our that tied in. Now, what I like to do when I'm, and you see how that will push the hackle back the way it needs to go, um, as long as you trap it down going the correct way. Oh my gosh, here is four fluorescent pink or UV pink dubbing fibers. I got to get those back in the thing. Now notice I'm, I'm, I'm using the UV pink, not the fluorescent pink and not the fluorescent UV hot pink. Um, but if you had anything close to that, that's a give her a whirl. This is just what is in the, um, on Lance's, uh, official pattern. So if you notice, I'm just kind of throwing some thread wraps in because what I want to do is figure out how big I want my little red band there. And um, I know I've been sneezing since we got back from walking Misha. I think it's just like the leaves are falling off the trees everywhere. And it's, it's just get me in trouble. Yeah. See, well, the, the only thing this the everything goes the exact same way, except for the tinsel, the tinsel. We were, we're wrapping the opposite way. But what I'm doing right now is building up this collar uh, to where it's about the size I want. So what it is, I just backed off a bunch of wraps because I think about five more wraps and I'll be good. So I'm gonna put my head cement on my thread and do my five turn whip finish. As you can see, I've got, got the body, got the fly, got everything that's with a big old four millimeter bead and i think i could get my tip at definitely 6x but i don't know that one's that bead's kind of kind of iffy so that one might end up going in the the trash but the uh the one i tied beforehand see how this this bead is just a, a touch it's showing yeah there's a big difference but um so those are the the two differences and just for the fun of it we'll tie one more quick one and this will be a size 16. You can wrap tinsel and tip. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That the tinsel goes the opposite direction. The tippet goes the same direction as your thread. So the tinsel and tippet go opposite. Um, so you don't have to. Well, if, if you're saying that the, um, the tinsel and the tippet go in different directions, then you're correct. Um, both of them do not go in the same opposite direction, though. And I'll, I'll let's see if I can explain a little bit better. I'll, I'll zoom through this part. And this is what I like about this show is being able to answer or work through stuff because Steve's not a new a newcomer. I could definitely be wrong, but um, I learned I learned a lot. You guys, I think there's a couple of y'all that learned picked up a thing or two. So just fun all around. Well, that was a terrible pull off. All right. So we'll take our piece here. Let's look at the tips. Well, that'd be somewhat lined up. It's not wanting to play though. I'll just be really quiet. Maybe that'll help. There we go. All right, so we'll get a little tip here. 
too long, so I'll pull this shorter. I'm trying to go kind of quick on this. Keeping it on top of the hook shank, spin it around so my bead's in the right spot. We use that material to um, hold my bead in place. Very nice, thanks. Been waiting to tie some blue darts to try. Yep, there was someone, I can't remember who it was. Someone was talking about the blue darts being really good, so I may as well add those to the box as well. Um, so this is gonna go on this side. This is my tinsel. So the reason that I'm tying my tinsel on this side is because it's gonna wrap in the opposite direction. What about the purple jarts? Purple jarts? Yes. It's been illegal since 1996. <laughs> I think we have some in our garage, actually. We do. Do you guys remember jarts? Were they called jarts? Yep. Those were really safe toys for us to have. Absolutely. I mean, they, they didn't seem dangerous to me at the time. But now I guess I can see how they would be a little bit dangerous, I guess. Jarts. Right, so that could be a new fly, honey, called the purple jart. I know. It can and be made out of like solid steel, like with a really pointy, pointy edge. Super sharp. All right, we'll see if that's enough dummy. I don't think it's going to be, but okay, so we've got our dubbing starting right here. Bring it forward. Yes, Peter P. You remember those? Those were fun. I don't understand why they're... I know. We had fun. We were fine. We were totally fine. Okay. So right now, if you notice, all I did, we've got to work wrapping the tinsel. So I stuck one of my... <laughs> I mean, but yeah, like, of course that stuff happened. But like, we were okay, right? And Freddie, most of us survived. Yeah. Most of us did. Okay. Um, thanks, John. John Boy, appreciate it. Just send us your address and we'll get that shipped out to you. So the my tail looks terrible, but you see I've got my tail there. I've got my tinsel coming out the this side, and I've got my, my tippet coming out this side. Now, when Lance does it, he, he holds them both together and wraps them both on top. I don't really like doing that. Because when you make your first wrap one way or the other, see how it's getting the, it moves the tail, the tail around. I mean, you can be careful with it and you don't have an issue with it. And it's not, it definitely works. I mean, Lance is, is the man when it comes to it. So it'll definitely, uh, definitely work. But if you'll wrap what you're going to counter wrap, so that means wrapping the opposite direction of your thread, if you'll wrap it on your near side, so on the tire side, and grab it, and I'm gonna use my rotary function, but I can easily not do that. And I'm wrapping this opposite direction of the thread, okay? Until I get to the front. And I'm gonna grab this and pull my thread up over, and just do a couple wraps there. So now it's, it's not latched off really good. Let's put it back under our pawn. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Put my thread back into my, my cradle. And then see when I make this wrap, my on both the tinsel and my tippet, because of where I tied this in, my first wrap when it goes is going on the underside. So it's not hitting the tail first, it's going underneath the fly. So this is going the same way that my thread goes, and it's crossing over and um, kind of tying in that tippet, or excuse me, tying in the tinsel. And if you wanted to, you could like, see how many, how many I had. I had one, two, three. So and I'm starting over. So if I want to, I could go one, two, three, four, five, that six. That's fine. You can go as many wraps as you want to. Just adds more. <laughs> Durability to the fly. I'm just mesmerized watching the rotary action. It's like relaxing to watch it spin. Your voice is our dream vice. Well, I don't like it 
Quite a bit. Yes. I, a tide bomb. I guess it is amazing we survived our childhood, but I, I don't know. I mean, like, it didn't feel dangerous at the time. You know what I mean? Like, the stuff we played with. Yeah. Yeah, Pat, Patrick, that's all That's all I was doing is counteracting the tinsel. And um, I was just trying to, when Steve was asking about which way to wrap which, I was trying to explain it. And he thought that Lance went the same way with both. And maybe I was just miss. I was just didn't understand. But that is, I believe, how Lance does his. And that's what I'll stick with. And that's the way I do it on a lot of different flies. And one of the neat things is when I'm doing, one thing I do a little bit different is when I'm doing um, pheasant tail nip. So let's say I'm just doing, Katie, we switch it over to the. Yeah. To I'm me. just trying to figure out which one you're trying to. They're on. perfect. When I'm doing the pheasant tail nip, um, this is a Davy McPhail trick, is uh, most of the time you'll see people, they'll wrap. The pheasant tail the same direction as their thread, their thread, their thread, and then they'll wrap the tinsel or the um, the wire in the opposite direction. So they're counter wrapping, um, and they're going opposite. So Davy McPhail, uh, he will counter wrap or he'll wrap the pheasant tail fibers in the opposite direction. So when he captures those off, and then he wraps the wire in the regular direction as your thread so when he captures the the wire off it pulls it tighter because if you're trying to tie in a material that's going the opposite direction of your thread you can tie it in but it's it's not tightening it up the more you tighten your thread the more it kind of pushes against the uh the thing does that make sense is that basically a strong oh whoever start off with saying is that basically a strong something ask again because i missed your comment um, all right, Katie had to run over and grab Misha, so you just have to bear with me here. And I know since we're um, running low on time, so you'll just have to trust me. I've got a little, I did pull off a new feather because I want it to be a little bit smaller uh, since it's a smaller hook size. Put a couple wraps, pulling everything back, a couple more because this was the first, um, oh, and she's back. My, First one. I had to blow my nose. Oh, is that what? I was? So now she'll switch it back to the vice. The tail basically shrunk. Basically, um, it's that this right here. But I, I, that's why I did the first one. Sorry, let me see you can see it good. Matt saw back, but I think this was like I don't know seven or eight years ago. This might have been like four dollars or five dollars. I don't know. It's not very expensive, but that's why I did the first one with something else. Don't don't get caught up on having the exact correct thing if it's purple awesome um which two of every third word yeah that's the way right there's a tail okay so i don't want to grab these with hack pliers one good wrap you can see how this hack was a little bit shorter and when you all tie tie your versions of this they're going the hack was probably going to look a little bit different because Depending on what you use, it's just going to look a little, a little different. No big deal. Like that cut off. I should, have gotten, should have gotten closer. If I whispered a bit, it would probably come off better. So there's that. And now we're going to grab our UV pink. I don't know where Gary Barnes went. He was on here for a second. Maybe he's just watching the background. Maybe. Okay. Bless you. Tell you what. All these crunchy leaves and everything in there. How she's allergic to Halloween. Anything cheap and purple. That's right, Steve. Or if you don't have anything, it can be expensive and purple. It might be a touch heavy. Just because I think it is a touch heavy. I'm gonna pull off just a little bit of it. We'll retighten this up. I said we'll retighten that up. There we go. Get that, and now we're good. So this is a size 16 with a three millimeter tungsten slotted tungsten bead. 
I don't know if I get some better beads so I can do a four, uh, four millimeter on here consistently because I'm going to go through six or seven beads every time I need want to tie one to get one that's going to stay on the hook shank. All right, so you see that little, little bit of red there. I don't like there to be a whole lot. I could probably do, do with a couple wraps more there, but this should be about... Um, oh, Katie... Jimmy said, bless you. Thank you. And that'll just about wrap us up for tonight. That was uh, that was fun tying this up. Congratulations to the three winners of, um, of the Eggtastic material. Will you hand me one of those two boxes right there? Or both of them? And then you can switch the cameras. Katie is back. So we've got some uh, some more stuff to add to our giveaway pile. And this is what I was saying for um, all the thanks, Jennifer, so much for the new tires. I've got it. If you have ideas of how we can best give this stuff away, this is super cool. So you've got the essential tying toolkit, right? Really good stuff. We've got a bunch of the tools, the Uncle tools here as well that work really well. But then we've got the master tying toolkit this is like everything that you would absolutely need to tie flies other than vice and materials um although after you get this you'll probably want to buy the next thing if you're like me um <clears throat> but these will be coming up next week or so for giveaway stuff so keep that in mind um Thanks for asking all your questions. Good night, Eli. It was awesome to see you, John Boy. Come back next week. I uh, don't know what we're going to tie. Maybe Jeff Rowley, I believe, is on the road. Maybe we can convince him to come over and tie one of his uh, uh, one of his flies here live next Wednesday. What do you think about that, Katie? I think that'd be great. All righty. Well, guys, thank you so much. I'll let Katie take us out. But as always, it's been a wonderful evening hanging out with you all. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Happy time. Bye.